Welcome to Dar Headlines, I'm Wendy Chen, thank you for joining us. Coming up in today's show, we join city volunteers in the Philippines as they are holding the third rice distribution in Cavite province. In today's report on insect invasion, we explore why the increase and expanding habitat of mosquitoes is worrying experts in Taiwan. And we meet a group of railway maintenance staff who are dedicating their lives to ensure the safety of their passengers. First up in early August, the Philippines was hit by torrential rain and typhoons that made the lives of poor families even harder. Therefore, starting on August 11th, city volunteers held three rice distributions every week in Cavite province. The final rice distribution was held in the municipality of General Mariano Alvarez on August 25th, in which over 100 government officials and Taiwanese entrepreneurs came to help. Overall, the relief distribution helped a total of 10,000 families. This granny's hand cart is too small to fit a 20 kilo bag of rice. I was told my bag was big enough since we would be given only two kilos of rice. If I had known the rice was 20 kilos, then I'd have something bigger to put it in. Thanks to Tsuji's distribution in Cavite province, needy families finally have rice to cook. I'm very happy because we finally have something to eat. Unlike last night, we were unable to eat because we didn't have anything to cook. <laughs> Around 100 government officials and Taiwanese businessmen came to distribute rice to local residents. The rice will be consumed eventually, but Tsuji's love will remain with us forever. To show their appreciation to Tsuji, the residents give back over 200 kilos in recyclables in return. Staying in Asia but moving to Taiwan, to celebrate the 7th lunar month, city volunteers in Taipei has not only put on a series of performances but also set up an exhibition at the Chiang Kai-shek Memorial Hall. For the past few days, the event has attracted many tourists from around the world and was also joined by volunteers from China's Xiamen, who seized the opportunity to learn more about the right beliefs of the lunar month. They hope to encourage local residents to change their habits and celebrate the festival as the month of auspiciousness and filial piety when they return home. Under the guidance of family and volunteers, 90-year-old Wang Zun arrives at the auspicious month exhibition held by Tsuji. Although physically challenged, the senior insists on donating the money himself. The greatest power is love. It's great. It is great to have a compassionate heart. I hope for world peace. To celebrate the seventh lunar month, Tsuji has not only put on performances but also set up an exhibition at the Jiang Kai Shin Memorial Hall. At the filial piety booth, volunteers use games to encourage youngsters to practice filial piety on a daily basis. Sometimes we will forget that we need to be filial towards our parents. The event inspired me to rethink my past behavior and the things I should do as a child. I will remember to practice filial piety when I go home. I wish all the people I know good health. To promote the seventh lunar month as a month of auspiciousness, Tsuji volunteers put on a variety of events at the exhibition. Today, the event was joined by more than a hundred Xiamen Tsuji volunteers. I hope everyone can take this chance to correct their superstitious beliefs and hold to more Buddhist beliefs such as no burning of just paper and no killing of animals as offerings. We have a lot of Taiwanese in Xiamen, and they should promote the concept that the seventh lunar month is a month of auspiciousness, and there is no need for the burning of Joss paper. The love and care from the Taiwan city volunteers allow the Xiamen volunteers to experience the warmth of family and help them further understand the meanings behind the seventh lunar month. 
While holding the 7th Lunar Month event at the Chiang Kai-shek Memorial Hall in Taiwan, city volunteers played the animated film on Venerable Tianzhen and put on sign language performances. The beautiful and solemn performance caught the attention of many passers-by, including the mayor of New Taipei City, Zhu Li Lun. <laughs> On stage, the volunteers use their body gestures to show the treacherous journey taken by Venerable Jin Zhen. The movements by the volunteers are all in sync with each other, and the beauty of the sign language also catches everyone's attention. The animated film Venerable Jian Zhen is the production of Dai TV and traces the path taken by the great monk who crossed the sea to spread Buddhism in Japan. The auspicious month celebration was also joined by government officials. The seventh lunar month is a month of gratitude, happiness and auspiciousness. We should thank those that help us. When we cultivate blessings together, we gain peace. Through the performances, Ziji hopes to promote the seventh lunar month as a month of auspiciousness, while reminding us that with a grateful heart, we can find peace and harmony. As pointed out in our series of feature reports on insect invasion yesterday, global warming is not only making our world a hotter place, but also changing the living habitats of countless species. One of those is the mosquito, whose habitats and numbers have expanded with the rise in the temperature. A worrisome trait as the two major species of mosquitoes in Taiwan, the Asian tiger mosquito and the yellow fever mosquito, are also known as carriers of the dengue fever. Taiwan's Center for Disease Control has already seen a rise in the number of dengue fever cases this year, while academics have tracked the mosquito growing range as its habitat slowly moves north. Here in southern Taiwan, one can see many households have put out a pail of water as their offering to the gods. Yet if the water is not changed, in just over a week, the offering quite possibly can become a hotbed for mosquitoes. Using flashlights, staff at Taiwan's Center for Disease Control conducts regular checks on wherever standing water is found for mosquito larvae. The staff also uses nets to catch mosquitoes in the air. This is a female yellow fever mosquito. If we catch a female, that doesn't mean that there is a breeding site nearby. As they have a range of 50 meters, if we find a male, however, that means that there is a breeding site nearby. After a thorough search, they find their breeding grounds in previously overlooked site. In Tainan, the spread of dengue fever continues to be a problem. Outbreaks have been reported in Jiannan, Nandu, and Nanhua borough. In order to prevent residents from relaxing their efforts to combat the spread of the disease, CDC personnel will make daily checks for breeding sites and promote awareness. 2011 was a good year. We brought the number down to 94 cases. This year, however, we had our first case reported in May, so this is going to be a tough year. The type of dengue fever we are seeing this year is a continuation of last year's. It was active since last year. It simply went into hibernation in March and re-emerged in May. This interval between this year and last has been shorter. The outbreaks are the same type as last year. That means it is continually lurking here and we haven't been able to stop its spread. But cases like this are rare. This outbreak was perhaps due to an unusually warm winter, which meant that 
adult mosquitoes were not killed off by the cold. The higher temperatures have also made it easier for mosquitoes to reproduce. After feeding on blood, a female mosquito can lay 100 to 200 eggs within 72 hours. After the larvae are hatched, the time to adulthood depends on the temperature of the surrounding environment. As the temperature increases outside, they go through the various growth stages quicker. At 18 degrees, it takes 20 to 25 days to go from lava to pupa. At 28 or 30 degrees, it only takes 7 to 8 days. In other words, as it gets hotter outside, mosquitoes breed faster. As long as it is warm outside, regardless if it's winter or summer, mosquitoes will appear. As the mosquitoes become more numerous, the chances of the spread of infectious disease also increases, thus potentially affecting many more people. The Asian tiger mosquito and the yellow fever mosquito have been shown in lab tests to have equal chances of transmitting dengue fever. However, the yellow fever mosquito is found indoors and thus can often infect a whole family at once. At temperature of 10 degrees Celsius or lower, the yellow fever mosquito will die. However, the Asian tiger mosquito can withstand temperatures this low. If the winters continue to get warmer, yellow fever mosquito could continue to extend northwards. In the past, they were primarily found in the south. Now they can intermittently be found in the center and north of Taiwan. This means that more areas now face the danger of dengue fever. We did a study and found with an increase of 1 degree Celsius, the townships that might have faced the threat of dengue fever will rise from 40 to 50 to 80 and 90 cases. As temperatures continue to increase, Taiwan's residents will have to face new mosquito habitats and the possible infectious disease that they carry. Whereas we can't change the weather, each of us can do our part in being aware of this problem and take steps to minimize its effects. Today we met the train driver of the Ali San Forest Railway and today we're meeting another group of hardworking men who are dedicating their lives to ensuring the safety of all passengers traveling by the railway. The railway needs regular inspection and maintenance and the work of these maintenance staff begins after midnight as they clear away rocks and other obstacles along the railway track. Their work also continues during the day as they examine the train's tracks to ensure they are lined up correctly. What's more inspiring is that these hardworking men who out of their busy schedules are devoted volunteer firefighters and police officers. An hour past midnight is when most people are asleep. However, work is only just starting for these railway workers. Two staff are put in a team and each carries a torch and a chainsaw. There might be fallen trees or rocks on the side of the rail, so they are in charge of clearing them out. Whenever there's a rock fall, these workers have to get off and clear it out. In monsoon or typhoon seasons, there will be more rock fall and down branches. Railway maintenance staff shine their torches on the tree along the track. On both sides of the road, there are trees in which we've made a mark. We need to get off and check them. On April 27, 2011, the forest train overturned after it was hit by the rotten branches of an oak tree, causing the death of five Chinese tourists and over 100 injuries. Since the 427 accident, we now have one more duty, and that is to check all the trees along the track. Yang Xiaolong, a member of the Zhou tribe who joined the railway work three years ago, at first found the job quite difficult. 
At first, I was really tired and I couldn't get used to it. In winter, it is sometimes zero or below zero. As for Liu Weichen, who gave up his job as an engineer, he feels the maintenance work is physically tiring but worthwhile. Regardless of how difficult it is for us, we have to ensure the safety of all our passengers. Our happiness comes from the friends we meet along the way. We get to see squirrels every day. Within three hours, the two men managed to inspect the eight kilometers long railway track. <laughs> At 4 a.m., Ali San Station is packed with tourists, all getting up to catch the first train up to the mountain. 30 minutes later, the train finally arrives at Zhu San Station, which is 2,451 meters above sea level, and there the passengers wait eagerly for sunrise. I'm very excited and happy. These maintenance staff work day and night, but rarely will passengers learn of their hardworking efforts. Come daylight, the team of seven men is out again to carry on their maintenance work. If we don't work together, we won't be able to shuffle the track. It is still hard work when the seven of us are pulling it together. Working together, the staff are bending the rails back on track. When the train is traveling, the track will become derailed and the weight of the train will change the shape of the track. They also ensure the bars are lying at a correct distance from each other. Sewing the screws off and taking out the section that needs repair, next four men carry the 220 kilo steel bar, while the other three push it towards another bar. It is obvious why some may refer to these railway maintenance staff as hardworking men for their efforts and dedication in keeping the train going. Nevertheless, despite the tough working conditions, four of the seven still use their spare time to serve as volunteer firefighters and police officers. We have quite a few volunteer police officers and firefighters. Whenever there's an accident in the mountain that needs assistance, they will all go out to help. Though these maintenance staff may seem like ordinary people, the work they do is actually extraordinary as they are safeguarding the lives of passengers every day. Next, we meet City Media volunteer Huang Hongming, whose habit of playing computer games was replaced by a passion for editing film. He picked up the video camera one day after constantly complaining that the video footage captured was not up to his standards. It was that one experience that made him realize filming is easier said than done. <laughs> Having a platform like the ITV to be able to report moving, emotional story is wonderful. This is Ciji Media volunteer Huang Hongming. No matter if he's operating a camera or editing film, he makes it look easy. However, it wasn't always that way. Dialogue, how to adjust things, there was a test. You had to pass a test to get the certificate. It was stricter back then. Knowing how to edit film and pass a test isn't difficult. Knowing how to capture clear and beautiful images is the key. Why do the films look like this? How am I supposed to edit them? It's all blurry. Why does it look like a security camera film this? I thought I could do this too. But when I returned to my first filming, I never complained about the footage again. Only when he picked up the video camera did Huang realize how difficult it was to capture the images needed to tell a story. In doing so, it sparked his interest in using film to convey the things he wanted to say. Every film, every story, there's some life lesson to be learned or something to warn us. What pays the bills is Huang's job managing the store with his wife. In his spare time, he changes into his uniform and lugs the video camera around to capture images to tell beautiful stories that moves us all.
In Taiwan, Zhanghua Ciji volunteers recently held a community blessing ceremonies to celebrate the seventh lunar month. One Ciji volunteer, Chen Chongfu, shared with everyone how his life has changed dramatically after becoming a vegetarian. Previously, when he was still a meat eater, he was short-tempered. However, after switching to a meatless diet, he learned to repent for his past behaviors and eventually found inner peace, a change that his wife noticed and is grateful for. Yuanlin Township's blessing ceremony brought thousands together to celebrate. One city volunteer shares his story about switching to a vegetarian diet. If I didn't have meat or fish at each meal, I would not feel full. I picked fights with my wife over this. It seems really ignorant now. Chen Songfu used to be a meat lover. No matter if the dinner table was full of delicious dishes, if there was not a meat dish, he would be upset and yell. He had a bad temper, but after he became a vegetarian, he has controlled it better. My son-in-law is like my own son, very filial. He takes me to places, assists me in getting around and makes sure I'm not hungry. Chen's own parents have passed away. However, he asked his in-laws to move in and even reconstructed his home to accommodate their needs. I was afraid of them stumbling, so this helps them get around better. These changes in Chen Chongfu have brought much joy to his family. The bakery opened by the Eaton Social Welfare Foundation in Taiwan has been helping many mentally and physically ch challenged children by giving them a chance to work. Today we take a look at the story of A Yuan, who has been working at the bakery for more than 13 years. Thanks to the support from his teacher, he not only gained confidence, but even earned enough money to purchase an apartment. This is A Yuan. He has been working at the bakery opened by the Eden Social Welfare Foundation for the past 13 years. Over here, he found confidence and even fulfilled his dream of purchasing a house. I am very happy to work here because I have a job and earn money too. A Yuan is very shy and always does things quietly. Before, he couldn't find a job, but now he's his pastry teacher's best assistant. The boiling temperature needs to be 230 degrees, and the bottom one needs to be 230 degrees too. It should be in for 15 minutes. Thanks. This is A Yuan's teacher Li Yiling, who used to be a pastry chef at a famous hotel. Eight years ago, after volunteering at the bakery opened by Eden and seeing the hard work these students put in, she decided to quit her high-paying job and become a teacher at this bakery. Sometimes I will be tired too. However, seeing the hard work they put in, I am very touched and I am willing to teach them. Thanks to the students' hard work and their teacher's determination, the cycle of love will continue to flow. The blessing ceremonies held by Ciji at the Zhang Kai-shek Memorial Hall successfully concluded on the evening of September 5th. Early yesterday morning, over 140 Ciji volunteers from around Taipei gathered to take down the stage and equipment, as well as carry out cleaning work. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for watching Dai Headlines. Goodbye. Thank you.